Hello Electroheads, Ailish here and I'm back with a roundup of five folding electric bikes that I would argue are worth your hard earned cash. Buying an electric bike is a very big deal. So let me help you out with some suggestions of what you could go for should you take the plunge. Let's kick off with bike number one. <laughs> Say hello to the Astali E20. Hello. I've had this folder as one of my choices of ride day to day, and I've been really enjoying what it has to offer. As the name suggests, this folder has 20 inch wheels. This means it's not the most compact compared to some other folders on the list today, but it does give you the upper hand with having a touch more stability. 16 inch wheels can feel ropey, especially if you're used to a larger sized wheel. So this offers a happy medium. You can also spec up to get Schwabi puncture protection tires to keep roadside breakdowns at bay. My favorite feature of this bike is actually the battery. It's not in the frame. It's been cleverly hidden in the seat post, meaning the E20 can keep a slim frame and reduce any bulkiness that some other designs can fall foul of. The battery is also removable, which is a big plus as you can charge up wherever you need. And the E20 is also equipped with seven gears to help you conquer hillier terrain and make starts a lighter touch with a lower gearing. And if you're like me and you carry a lot of stuff around, having the rear rack makes all the difference. The rack, mud guards, and light are a spec up option, so you don't have to have it if you don't need it, but it does mean that you can keep the cost down a touch. But overall, the motor feels punchy and responsive. I'm five foot 10 and weigh around 65 kilograms, and the max 40 newton meters of torque carries me off from a stop start in no time. Max rider weight for this one is 110 kilograms, and it's recommended for riders from five foot to six foot five. If you want to find out more about the E20, then go ahead and click the link above to see my full review. Price wise, currently, you're looking at a spend of around £1,295. If you max out your ride with Schwabi puncture protection tires and mud guards and a rear rack and lights, it's gonna set you back about £1,400. On to bike number two. Next up on my list is another British brand. Have you heard of MyRider? Well, if not, you are in for a treat. Their flagship model, the MyRider 1, really impressed me with its solid build, single speed and throttleicious experience. It's a great option at a mid-range price point if you're looking at a 16 inch wheel with teensy dimensions. But today I want to talk about their latest model, the GB3. As the name suggests, this sexy little e-ride has three gears for more control, a Kevlar belt drive for minimum maintenance and maximum resilience, and slightly wider handlebars for better maneuvering. Okay, the last point might not sound like much, but I've ridden both and it really does make all the difference, particularly if you're not as experienced with a smaller wheel. But this is also where the My Rider really shines. The smaller wheel really adds to how compact this fold down really is. I've actually done a comparison video between the My Riders and the much more expensive Go Cycle in this video right here. Check it out! The one thing to note is that it's not the lightest on the list today. The GB3 weighs in at 19.4 kilograms, so you don't want to be lugging this up and down too many flights of stairs. But hands down, if you need a foldable that can take on some hills, the My Riders have got some serious welly. The throttle assist that, by the way, only works when you're pedaling, making it legal in the UK, means you get an incredible stop start and even more assistance when needed on the hills. Whilst the Model 1 can cost around £1,500, the GB3 is going to set you back around £2,500. It's not cheap, but the price tag reflects what it offers. Each bike is assembled by one person who even leaves their mark with a personal sticker. The range is really good too, up to 45 miles on one charge, which, when I tested it, was not far off. <laughs> How could I do a folding bikes lineup without including the legendary Brompton? I mean, to be fair, I didn't include them in another list I did about half a year ago, and I got absolutely ripped to shreds by it by you guys in the comments. So this video is my redemption. No, there is not a conspiracy. We don't hate Brompton. My aim was to just give some lesser known suggestions and give you more to think about. They are definitely worthy of this list. Brompton really feels like it's the hoover of vacuum cleaners. It's the Nurofen of ibuprofen. When you think of a folder, a Brompton will spring to mind. Brompton has made a name for themselves with their lightweight, convenient, compact fold down dimensions. They can achieve this thanks to their low frame design. And now 
there's an electric option. I tried out the electric sea line and the transition from my big 28 inch wheel Astali to this was a jump, but you soon get a feel for the different style of ride. It's nippy, unbelievably compact, even the handlebars are so short in width that sliding down on the inside to get past traffic and down to the red traffic like is a doddle. The smart pedal assist creates a smooth startup when you turn the pedals to engage the motor with the flexibility of six speeds for varying terrain and inclines. For a bike that is so small, it really delivers and the range claim on this is up to 43 miles. But like a lot of these bikes, the price is not so small. You can get your hands on one of these from around 2,900 pounds, but what is especially great is all registered Brompton electrics are covered with a whopping seven year warranty and a three year electrical system warranty, all serviced in store. Now that's seriously impressive. On to bike number four, and I've gone big. It is the GoCycle G4i. These lot have long been the godfather of the electric folding market. This foldable offers a lot of unique features and patented components that you just can't get on anything else. And the price point does reflect that. It is a whopping 4,000 pounds, in fact. I know, it's a lot, but remember, this is a premium bike that caters to a kind of clientele that have this kind of money to spend. And if that's you, Teach me. Never ride on your friends and always keep your mouth shut. GoCycle's founder is a McLaren Cars former design engineer. He's injected all of his knowledge and expertise into creating something completely unique. The famed clean drive is a fully enclosed gearing system that can automatically shift up and down for you whilst keeping everything covered so that the rider can wear any kind of trousers or skirt and not have to worry about it being caught in the chain or getting mucky from the oil. Even the motor has been designed in-house for a bespoke experience. Folding the bike is intuitive. You don't have to learn or familiarize yourself with what goes wear like other foldables. Everything has been thought out so you don't really have to think. You've been going around thinking thoughts your whole life and look what that's got you. There's an app to map and track your rides and tweak your preferences and tailor the bike to your very own riding style. It's been noted as the most rider focused folding electric bike yet and I wouldn't argue with that. Although I would say I'm not a massive fan on the look, there are definitely better lookers out there but hey it's what's on the inside that counts, right guys? If you want to find out more then click the link here to watch my full review but for now let's keep moving and finally i'm going to end on a slightly more wallet friendly option i appreciate a fair few of these bikes have been in the couple thousands or more which is not for everybody especially if you're a first time buyer and or looking to dip your toes in the warm e-ride waters i haven't actually ridden this foldable but i have heard brilliant things about this brand this is rad powers rad expand 5. as the name suggests this bike is in its fifth generation the previous gen had won awards but that wasn't enough for rad power they tweaked and refined to bring a two kilogram lighter folder with fatter tires, adjustable handlebars to fine tune for a custom fit plus a rear rack. All of this and more for the price of £1,349. Rad Power have always been super mindful about making e-rides that are modular, but what does that mean? What that means? Basically, you can customize your bike with a load of different attachments to suit your needs. You can get a front basket or rack, a cargo net, a pannier rack, even a waterproof safe house for the kids to jump on the back. Okay, that last one isn't actually compatible with the folder I'm talking about today, but if you look at their accessories list, they really have thought of everything. So there's that, but let's talk more about the bike. This rad little number features 20 inch wheels and those chunky tires I mentioned earlier for some decent stability and added padding to bumpier terrain and inevitable potholes. The battery is pretty chonky as well, 672 watt hours that equates to around 40 to 72 kilometers of range. You also get seven gears, mud guards, integrated lights. The one difference with this and probably why they've been able to knock down the price to under 1.5K is the sensor they've chosen for the pedal assist. A cadence sensor is the more basic, cheaper sensor that uses a magnet on the crank that turns the motor off and on like a switch. More complex sensors will read how much you're pushing down on the pedal and deliver a similar amount of force. So the style of ride will be a little more off and on. But for the price point and what this offers, this really feels like a fantastic all-rounder. Just don't expect to carry this up flights of stairs as it weighs in at a whopping 28 kilograms. You what? But hold on a minute, you thought we were done. And you'd be right in thinking so because this is a top five, but I'm back for one more with a new hairstyle and a bit of a tan. 
It's amazing what can happen in a few split seconds. Believe in yourself. I've actually got one more bonus bike because in all honesty, I got this bike in after recording this listicle and realized it had to be included. So here it is, our secret number six, by far the cheapest of the lot, it's the Fido D3 Pro. Fido have been a bit of a don in the e-mobility, micro, micro, micro mobility scene. Motors video on the Q1, absolutely blew Hello, out of the head. water. Check it out here if you're interested. And the theme continues as for starters, this folding bike is tiny, I mean really tiny. Declan Donnelly tiny. It's got a small frame, a very small set of wheels, the smallest on our list today at 14 inches. But don't let looks deceive you, despite its compact look, the D3 Pro can cater for riders from 5 foot all the way up to 6 foot 5. That's 155 centimetres to 200 centimetres. And that's all thanks to its heavily extendable head tube and seat post and its low profile frame means it's easy to step on and off. For reference, I'm 5'10 or 177 centimetres. And even more surprisingly, the max rider weight for the D3 Pro is 120 kilograms. This is an e-bike that is both small and mighty. Also, by the way, please don't judge me on wearing a pair of Vans with a pair of Adidas or Adidas socks because, uh, look, laundry was, was, was hard. It's been a hard week. It's been a really busy time, actually, and I just haven't been really able to get around to um, just doing admin things at home. Just making content for you guys. So much content. I quit. Anyway, back to the script. Weighing in at 17.5 kilograms, the D3 Pro took me by surprise when I first picked it up. It may be small, but thanks to the punchy 250 watt motor and big ass battery it's packing in the back, it's deceivingly heavier than it looks. But for context, this bike is one of the lightest on this list today. However, once you do remove the battery, it's much easier to carry the frame. But what about the riding style? Well, this isn't no ordinary road bike and the ride style sticks to that theme. It's an upright seating position and you're pedaling down rather than forward. The only way I can describe it is it kind of feels like you're on a bar stool with pedals. Different, but it's actually a lot of fun. This bike brought a lot of smiles to my face. I can see why this has become such a popular choice. But one thing I would say is that it's compact qualities and teensy wheels does make this more of a local runaround bike. But if anyone out there is doing tours on this bike, drop me a comment. Prove me wrong. Come at me, guns blazing. But what about the spec? The D3 Pro comes with a 250 watt motor and a 7.8 amp hour battery, and Fido claims it can get up to 60 kilometers on one charge. But this is heavily dependent on the rider, terrain, temperature, how you ride it, etc. But it does have quite chunky batteries, so it may well deliver. The D3 Pro also comes with 160 millimeter mechanical brakes. No, it's not hydraulic, but yes, they do work very well with this bike. Let me show you. Son, where'd you find this? Some serious breakage there, and those chunkier road tires are giving some good grip on the tarmac. This bike is a single speed, however, don't despair at the prospect. When that is paired with an electric motor, you'll find a single speed's capabilities on hills is a pleasant surprise. There's also a throttle to help push you along, which, by the way, may or may not be legal in your country, so make sure to check out regulation for where you live. So to conclude, if you're in need of a super compact, easy to store, shorter commute runaround, then this is a superb option at its price point. Okay, we really are done now. So there you have it. Five electric folders that I think are well worth your cash, whatever budget you have in mind. Let me know your thoughts on this lineup in the comments. And if you found any of this useful today, make sure to hit that like button. Let me know. Don't forget to subscribe if you're new here and I'll see you soon. Bye.